So thank you, Len, for that uh, introduction. Uh, when you referred to me as a visionary, I had just for a moment, in my earlier job as a psychiatrist, I used to treat people that had visions. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, and thank you to Puni Kōkiri for the invitation to be here. You're never quite sure when you get an invitation from Te Puni Kōkiri whether it's an invitation or an instruction. But <laughs> it's good, uh, good to be in and with uh, Super U as well. Uh, the, the question that comes up is three dimensions of it, whānau, hapu and iwi wellbeing. And we've been moving towards this notion of wellbeing now for some time. I think whānau water is about wellbeing for three or four decades, we've focused on what's wrong and the problems that people have and how we can address disparities and disadvantage. Uh, the shift to well-being takes us in a different direction and whānau water is a step in that way. The post-settlement opportunities are a great step in that way to move away from uh, grievance mode and into looking at opportunities where well-being can flourish. And the Ministry of Health's uh, Māori Health Strategy Pai order focuses on Modi order, Fano order, and Wai order. It's more about health than about sickness. And then we see so many community initiatives. I am Māori, which is largely about wellness. Uh, Tamatatini, largely about wellness. If you compare the front row of Tamatatini now compared to the front row of Matatini 20 years ago, huge changes, <laughs> in, especially in the haka. So we have been moving away from the focus on sickness towards a focus on wellness for some time. The, the question is, uh, what is well-being? And the absence of an illness isn't the same as well-being. And recovering from an illness doesn't mean that well-being has arrived. It just means you've recovered from an illness. And if you run a marathon, it doesn't necessarily mean you're well. It means you know how to run. And if you get NCA credits or you complete a doctorate, neither of those guarantees wellness. And the wealth of an iwi is not by itself a reliable measure of a well iwi. And a beautiful marae is not the sole determinant of a well hapu. And a whānau who are rich in te reo Māori is not always a sign that the whānau is well. So we have... Uh, sometimes confuse the notion of wellness as being not sick or not disadvantaged or not in deficit mode. It has its own meanings, which are not necessarily directly related to its opposites. One of the questions that comes up is, what do you measure if you're trying to measure well-being? Do you measure the circumstances of individuals, put it all together to get a picture, or do you take measures that relate to the collective as a whole and use measures for that? And probably the answer is both. We need to measure the circumstances of individuals. The more challenging role is to measure the circumstances of a collective, whether that's a whānau collective or a hapū collective or an iwi collective. The relationship between whānau, hapū and iwi and individuals goes in several directions. It might be a top-down direction where iwi contribute to hapu and whānau and individuals, or it might be a bottom-up approach where individuals contribute to whānau and they contribute to hapu and hapu contribute to iwi, or it might be a two-way process where all of these things are interrelated. And probably whānau and possibly hapu are somewhere in the middle. They can go in two directions. They can relate to individuals and contribute. They can also relate to hapu. So they may be at the midpoint of the continuum between individuals on the one hand and iwi on the other. So I thought I'd just talk about four uh, projects or programs or approaches that I've been involved with uh, over the years, over the many years. Uh, 
just got Fata sitting right in front of me and uh, was remembering about something that happened in 1968. We had uh, dinner together at a Mexican restaurant in Montreal. Fata had been at the University of British Columbia and I was at uh, McGill University and we met up with our wives and had a meal together at this Mexican restaurant. And it was a great meal until suddenly halfway through it, Fata says, what do you think about establishing a Maori university? And I thought, Fata, you've been drinking too much. <laughs> but that was, uh, that was a statement which was to come true when he pushed towards the establishment of, of Te Wānanga o Rokoa, which has moved into other areas. So well-being takes many forms, and it's been around, uh, as Len mentioned, we've seen the, the developments of it occurring for a long time. But one uh, study that I was involved in was uh, called Rapa Water, that was 1984. And then the Fano Water study, which was uh, 2009 and 10. The well-being of a hapu, and I've, I've chosen uh, Tahuri Wakanui as a hapu, because it's the most significant hapu in the country, but most of you have never heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I've also looked at the well-being of an iwi, and that's uh, one called Ngati Kaupata, which is also a significant iwi in the, wo in the world. <laughs> So, first of all, Rapa Water was a really groundbreaking uh, research study undertaken by uh, the Māori Women's Welfare League. Uh, they produced their report, Rapa Water, in 1984, and three of the principals in it were uh, Elizabeth Murchie, Georgina Kirby, and Media Simpson. Media translated the whole uh, report. But this was groundbreaking because it was Māori women researching the health and well-being of Māori women. So it was uh, most of the people who were involved in the study didn't have any research experience. The field workers were largely uh, older women who had been in the league for some years, and it was their job to go and knock on doors and invite people to participate in the study. They had their own way of doing it. Knock on the door, put the foot in the door, <laughs> and they managed to get 98% consent. <laughs> LAUGHTER And they uh, had a questionnaire they went through, one of the questions is, what religion do you belong to? I don't think that occurs in the questionnaires now. Anyway, it did then. And uh, there was an old elderly lady in her 70s from Te Arawa who reported back at a, a debrief and said that she had asked one young lady, uh, what religion do you belong to? And this young woman said, uh, I don't, I'm an atheist. And the old, uh, older lady said, my dear, your grandmother's an Anglican, your mother's an Anglican, so you're an Anglican. <laughs> and so she took the Anglican box. <laughs> Some people say that the, the quality of the data was just a little bit uh, <laughs> suspect. But this was, a groundbreaking, this was a groundbreaking study, because when they came to analyze their data, they did it according to these dimensions of Waitua, Heningaro, Tinana, and Fano. So that was the basis that they used to determine the health and well-being of Māori women. 1984, a hugely uh, groundbreaking uh, study. The other one I was involved in that you, you know, all know better was the Task Force on Whānau Centred Initiatives, which uh, began in 2009 and produced its report in 2010. And it was about an integrated approach to service delivery, a whole of government response, I don't think the whole of government heard it, but the, it was about a, a whole of government approach rather than response, rather than two or three sectors, and it was to be uh, outcome focused. And the goals that uh, the task force suggested that would talk about whānau wellness were these, that whānau should be self-managing, they should be living healthy lifestyles, participating fully in society, that's in an education and all other aspects of society, confidently participating in te ao Māori, economically secure, and successfully involved in wealth creation. There had been a bit of debate about wealth creation was a, a wellness thing. Uh, we felt that poverty was really, no, there's no great virtue in poverty, uh, so you need to get out of that one. And that uh, whānau who were cohesive, resilient, and nurturing were more, more likely to be well. So they were the parameters of wellness uh, that the task force recommended uh, in its report. And some of those uh, have been translated into specific indicators. 
uh, Tofano or Waipareda has done quite a lot of work in that, where they've looked at each of the outcome domains. For example, Rangatiratanga self-management, Fano have a kawa to guide their relationships would be an indicator. Most of us have kawa when we're on the marae. We don't always have a kawa about how to eat when we're at home, or who does what, or who takes out the rubbish. <laughs> but just to have a kawa that was related to Fano. And the uh, living healthy lifestyles uh, at Domain, some of the suggestion uh, indicators of that is Fano have a healthy eating pattern, so that they've agreed on, a, on an eating pattern. They take advantage of preventative health, for example, immunization, and they're involved in sport and exercise. So they would be indicators that tell you about that particular domain. And the, uh, the, the whanaungatanga, co cohesion, resilience, and nurturing domain uh, indicators could be whānau have a shared website, because they won't all live in the same town, they won't all live in the same country. Whānau have managed a crisis successfully, and whānau are able to care for children in need. So they're just some of the indicators that can be attached to these very broad domains that were identified in the whānau order uh, research. Uh, the third case study is about the well-being of a hapu. I talked about Tahuri Wakanui hapu. And if you're travelling from Palmerston North to Fielding, you go past a little place called Aurangi and stop there, and you'll see a donation box. Oh, no. <laughs> but that's where... That's the uh, Tahuri Wakanui. It's a uh, hapu of Ngāti Kaufata. And in the last... Uh, over the last couple of years, been having a series of wānanga, to work out where, is it, where does our hapu want to go and what are the things that will be important to us as a hapu. And these are some of the commitments we've uh, agreed on. We're going to maintain the mana of the hapu. We want to keep our whānau members safe. Uh, we want to enable our whānau within the hapu to engage with each other appropriately, whether it's online or in, in another way. We want to ensure that the whānau and our hapu retain ownership and control of their assets, especially their land. We want to increase our land holdings. Uh, we want to endorse the kaupapa and tikanga of our marae. We want to contribute to the ongoing development of marae amenities. I'll talk a bit about that at lunchtime. And we want to sustain relationships with our iwi and other marae. So that's the commitments that the hapu made. And if you translate that into a well-being, we say that our hapu will be well when the mana of our hapu is strong, when our whānau are safe, secure and connected, when our land holdings have increased, our marae maintain tikanga and kawa, our hapu contributes to the ongoing development of our marae, and our hapu contributes to iwi and local community endeavours. So that would be how we would judge the wellness uh, of our hapu. The fourth case study is, is about uh, iwi well-being, and this is uh, contained in a strategy that Ngāti Kofata developed in 2014, and it's the uh, Kofata 2040 strategy, based around our three marae, Kofata, Aorangi, and the one at the bottom, Iwa Te Koma Iwa. If you're driving from Palmerston North to Bulls, and you go past Oahuri, if you look out on your left, you'll see that there. Except you won't see it there because it hasn't been there since 1937. But the old people who are travelling always point to it and say, oh, there's Iwa Te Koma Iwa, uh, and they sort of see it. The idea is to rebuild it. But they were the three, uh, three marae that were uh, our principal marae. And the, uh, the, the Iwi strategy looks at five goals for the future. Mana ake, mana taio, mana whenua, mana tangata and mana iwi. And for each of those, mana ake, iwi, integrity and distinctiveness, our emphasis will be on maintaining and transmitting cultural knowledge that is unique to kofata. Key to the goal will be flourishing marae, and we're considering the construction of a virtual marae so that our whanau who are not learning in uh, mana two can still participate in marae activities and marae fundraising. <laughs> and then we have uh, goal two is mana taio, a safe and sustainable environment. We want the uh, river that uh, runs behind our, our three marae 
We want uh, to be advocates to the rest, to restore that river to its to its uh, full potential. It's it's in a, not in a good state at present. Uh, we want to increase the bird life, the fresh water fish. We also want to look at the wider environment. We want to discourage road, rail, and air use that compromise Kawa and Tikanga because if you're on some of our marae, they are handicapped by the planes flying over and the trains uh, going past and the cars speeding up and down the road. We want to change that. We want to build. We want to promote built environments, so we're talking about the natural environment and the streets and the houses that our people live in. And we want our relationships with our local councils, the territorial councils, to have priority for environmental integrity. And our third goal is growing our estate. Uh, Kofata has virtually, uh, has very little land left. And yet we talk about tangata whenua and we talk about mana whenua if you don't have the whenua, you're only sort of half there. And we, uh, we think that land is an absolute key to our identity. Uh, we've been alienated from it. Uh, what we want to do, our two key platforms of this goal, is we want to retain our current land holdings and we want to acquire additional lands so that we can talk about mana whenua as if we meant it. And we want our people to be knowledgeable. We want them to be able to achieve an education right throughout life, so we're not just talking about school, we're talking about lifelong learning, uh, particularly the importance of digital learning and health literacy, financial literacy. We want them to have the health knowledge and skills so that they can enjoy well-being, that they know how to prevent poor health, but more importantly, they know how to be well in themselves. We want them to have knowledge of the past as well as the future, and we want to have our people who are skilled so that we have a relevant and a very well qualified workforce. And the fifth goal is uh, mana ha'iwi, ensuring that Kofata has wide influence. We want to have significant economic, cultural and social influence at home and abroad, build strong links with other organisations. We already have them with our iwi in the area. We want them to have them with business, government agencies, health and social services, regional councils, and we want to partner and joint venture uh, to assist our own people identify goals that contribute to the public good. So there are the five goals, and what they tell us is that our iwi will be strong, we'll be well, when our marae are flourishing. We'll be well when our rivers and our safe and, uh, are safe, and our built environments and natural environments are safe. We'll be well when our land holdings are substantial and not minimal. We'll be well when we have a knowledgeable and highly literate whānau. And we'll be well when we have collective influence locally and regionally. So that's our take on wellness uh, for a particular iwi. So if you put these together, you get some themes that come across all of those dimensions, individual, the Rapa Water study, uh, Fano, the Fano Water study, uh, Hapu, the Tahuri Wakanui study, and uh, Iwi, the Kofoto 2040. And these are some of the themes that come up. Fano circumstances are a key to well-being, but so is self-management, Fenua, particularly Māori land, natural and built environments, having lifestyles that can adapt it, uh, having lifelong learning and multiple literacies. Uh, we make the mistake sometimes thinking that if you go to school, that's it, but our learning needs to be lifelong. Uh, we'll be well when we have uh, our own dignity and integrity, which is uh, our own mana, marae, tikanga, and te So they are the, the, the uh, range of themes that have come out of these particular studies. Uh, I expect that uh, this uh, hui that we're having uh, now We'll take all of these themes further and that we'll have an opportunity to explore the parameters of well-being, to look at the pathways that lead to well-being and to consider the measurements that tell us whether we have achieved well-being or not, not only for whānau but well-being for whānau, hapū and iwi. Kia ora.